Hello everyone. I am Sunshine Wang from Hosei Lotaber Research Center for Biomedical Imaging. My talk is on AI-driven MRI image reconstruction. We all know MRI is a powerful imaging modality that can provide versatile information. However, it has a bottleneck limitation of slow imaging speed, also known as long imaging time, which has hindered its wide applications. So fast and high resolution imaging techniques are in need for various high-end clinical applications, such as dynamic vascular imaging, cardiac imaging, and so on, so forth. To accelerate MR imaging, different techniques have been developed, such as MR physics-based pulse sequence design, hardware-based parallel imaging with fixed recoils, and image reconstruction from incomplete case phase data. These measures can either reduce the acquisition time or reconstruction time. Our specific focus here is image reconstruction from incomplete case phase data, whose mathematical model can be described as follows, which consists of a data fidelity term and also a prior regularization term. And lambda is a weighting parameter to determine whether or not the prior information is introduced and how much the prior information is introduced. To reconstruct MR image from the incoming case based data, in 2016, we proposed to use deep learning. The proposed framework consists of two parts. The first part is trying to identify the nonlinear relationship between the under sample data and the fully sample data. And the online reconstruction is trying to predict an image with a flat trained model. Then it can be used either as a regularization or as an estimation. Different from the both linear reconstruction ones and the CSMR reconstruction ones, the proposed measures are expected to reduce both the scan time and the reconstruction time. The most time consuming part can be done offline. This is the mathematical de description for the offline training and for the online reconstructions. In addition to our work from 2016, there have been more and more papers appeared on deep learning based MR reconstruction. These methods can be roughly grouped into two types the end to end deep learning MR reconstruction and the unrolled iterative deep learning MR reconstruction methods. Now I will give you some examples of each type. The first example shows the work of variational network. It is targeted to solve a generalized variational CS model. They get the iterative update rule for the image while grading descent algorithm. Then the steps of iterations are enrolled into learning a variational network. To obtain a reconstruction, they fit the ensemble case-based data, called sensitive maps, and zero failure solution to the learned variational model. These are the reconstruction results given by variational network and for the other measures. As you can see, the learned VIN can generate image closer to the ground truth image, which has sharper edges and better artifact removal effect. And also, the enlarged region is closer to the reference image. This example is also for parallel MR image, but different from VNet or VSnet or ModelDR. This work doesn't need to estimate the sensitivity, so it's a calibration-free neural network. It tries to explore the image sparsity and the channel correlations with convolutional neural networks. The table here summarizes the quantitative comparison for 50 test images using different reconstruction methods and different understanding patterns and a variety of action factors have been tried. It can be observed that the calibration method has better capability in most of the time, but the model DR also shows very robust results. This is another example, AutoMap. 
It was published in Nature in 2018. In this work, they try to learn a nonlinear relationship with the neural network between the central domain and the image domain. The ImageNet pre-training was adopted to initialize the network parameters, and the same network structure was constructed to handle different acquisitions. They have evaluated AutoMap in different sampling trajectories. AutoMap has shown better reconstruction results compared to conventional approach, and also it has better quantitative indicators like signal-to-noise ratios. This is another example named Dimension. In this work, both case-based learning and image-based learning are adopted with a multi-supervision scheme. The case-based learning is better at capturing the high-frequency information such as details and fine structures, while the image-based learning is more applicable to suppress artifacts and noise. The proposed method has been compared with four state-of-art approaches. As you can see from the visual comparison, the proposed method gets better results closer to the ground truth, and also the error is the lowest. The quantitative comparison is better than the other four measures as well. This is another example of deep complex MRI we developed for parallel MRI imaging. In this work, all the network weights and nodes are complex valued, but they are implemented in TensorFlow as real valued networks with real and imaginary components and complex valued operations. The essence of the proposed approach is a complex valued convolution as it shown in the top figure. We adopted relay distribution to initialize the magnitude and use the uniform distribution between negative pi and pi for the phase. With the magnitude and phase multiplied, we achieve the complete initialization of the complex parameters. As you can see from the comparing results between the proposed method with variational neural network, L1 spirit and L1 spirit, there are less noise and less artifacts in the reconstruction error, and the quantitative indicators are encouraging as well. As a discussion, we could see that the different types of learning reconstructions have different kinds of properties. Generally, the image domain end-to-end -end learning are better at removing image noise and artifacts, which can directly use different network structures and transfer learning techniques from natural imaging process areas. The case-based learning are better at keeping high-frequency information, namely details and fine structures which has strong connections with classical case-based reconstruction methods. The case-based to image-based learning can get a better trade-off between removing artifacts and noise and key details. The network learned for CS models normally have better theoretical explanations. This slide provide some discussion on the concepts of learning reconstruction. Model capacity normally represents the capability of a neural network in representing a nonlinear relationship. The model capacity is normally proportional to its network size. The deeper and the wider, the model capacity will be larger. We also need to know the concepts of overfitting and underfitting. Overfitting tends to extract some of the radio variations as the model structures while well, underfitting cannot adequately capture the underlying structure of the data. So, when we configure our models, we need to consider about the relationship between model capacity and data complexity. The data size is not the larger the better, since it is not only about the data size, but also the data heterogeneity should be considered. The model capacity isn't the larger the better either, they are kind of correlated as shown in the bottom right corner. When the data size is very large, model capacity is small, overfitting will happen. On the other hand, if the model capacity is small, data size is large, underfitting will happen. So we need to properly adjust the model capacity and training data size for achieving an appropriate capacity for the image reconstruction problem. 
To conclude my talk, I present the application of artificial intelligence for MR image reconstruction. The benefits of employing AI is obvious because better reconstructing results and higher accuracy factors can be achieved, and it has strong prior knowledge known capabilities. Limitations of AI techniques include the requirement of large amounts of training data and also the prior knowledge. Exploited is normally constrained to the data we have seen during training. Furthermore, the theoretical explanations are still underdeveloped. So, as an outlook, I think the mathematicians, physicians, and imaging scientists will work more closely. New trends in machine learning and MR reconstruction may include training with small data sets, weakly supervised or even unsupervised learning, network developments to address high dimensional imaging and multitasking. With that, I would like to end my talk. If you have any questions, you can send me an email. Thank you very much for your attention.